I view the duet as being like the special ops team that goes into a hostile environment. Duet Series 1, when we first started off developing that product, we really were focusing on near-boundary application. And in fact, all the, a lot of the development that we did was geared towards being in a near-boundary environment. A lot of people were really surprised that they performed that well near a boundary. They actually had imaging, and, and they had a natural tonal balance, and they had stupendous dynamics. We originally designed the Duet to be a multi-purpose product, to be placed in bookshelves, to be placed in bookshelves on its side, to be used as a center channel, front, left, and right, surround, um, to be used on a stand away from a wall, to be used on a stand close to a wall. That in itself has some drawbacks. As time went by and we you know, gained more experience, with how the speaker was actually being used in the field, we've learned a few things in six years. With this product, we're, we're not so much interested in making it one product fits all situations. Specifically with Series 2, it really is a systems approach. It's been specially engineered to be near boundary, and there are two applications that a customer can order. One being on a stand as a system, the other being as the duet with a separate novel crossover to be mounted on a bookshelf or similar application. We've added some technology to the company, one of those things being the laser vibrometer. We didn't have that with Duet Series 1. So as we moved into Duet Series 2, we really wanted to take a hard and close look at what's happening in the enclosure. It is a pretty small volume, and we've got a fairly large driver creating a lot of energy. One of the, the things that we didn't have on Duet Series 1 is we didn't have Series 1 rigidly attached to the stand. And as soon as we did that, as soon as we took the Series 2 first prototype and rigidly attached that to the stand that we built and for the measurement purposes, we noticed that everything got cleaned up by orders of magnitude. And so we were able to go in and surgically excise uh, resonances uh, in, in panel areas through a number of different approaches, reinforcements and, and thicker materials in certain locations. The thickness of the wall are uh, varied and the aesthetic cues on the side of the enclosure aren't just for the sake of industrial art. It's to better address panel resonances. As, as I'm building it up, we're constantly asking the craftsmen, okay, how would you do this? How would you better uh, machine this product? And getting that feedback is, is it's a really important aspect of the design process. And, and everyone is connected to the product in their own special way. wrap the form around the performance that you hope to achieve. The slope on the baffle of the, uh, of the Duet Series 2 is not uh, a haphazard matter. The slanted baffle gives us unequivocal uh, correction in the time domain. Uh, whereas the approach that we used before provided some correction, but not as thorough. As, as the slanted baffle. And now, with the introduction of Alexia and its success and, and, and what we've been able to glean out of the, uh, the R&D of that tweeter, we're able to take some of that innovation and adapt it now to the duet. The tweeter, uh, we are uh, utilizing uh, convergent synergy technology in that tweeter so that uh, it benefits uh, you know, from, from what we've learned during that six year period of time. Duet was originally designed to maximize the performance of an eight inch woofer. An eight inch woofer in such a small enclosure, how do you do that? How do you do that in a way that, that nets the result that an audiophile expects? Taking the, the crossover out of the enclosure 
helps give us more internal volume. So that eight inch woofer has more room to breathe and operate. We started adding a crossover into that enclosure and the enclosure would have to get significantly larger to compensate for the air volume that the crossover itself is taking. Duet is unique in that it was always designed to be something that could either be stand mount or it could be, you know, in cabinetry or bookshelf mount. We already had the Duet in the novel when we already knew what application that was going to be for. As we started looking at the Duet as a stand mount now, from a system standpoint, as you start looking at that, it just made more and more sense to go the direction that we did, and that was putting the crossover essentially as not a novel enclosure, but to put it as part of the stand enclosure. We can actually optimize the wiring, the wire lengths, twist ratios, all of that, because now we have a known uh, contained space and we have known lengths that we need to run that wire. The Duet is a special product, and we want people to understand how special it is. It's not an entry-level product uh, by any means. It's a specialty engineered product. From the outset, Duet Series 1 and now continuing in du Duet Series 2, um, it, it was specially designed and engineered to perform in a certain environment. And in this regard, that's near a boundary. The performance level is just going to be easier. It's going to sound even smoother, more dynamic. The noise floor is going to be less. There'll be less grain. Uh, the imaging will be better. There'll be better soundstage depth. Uh, in it, there's greater liquidity in the sound. Uh, it's uh, it's just uh, it's just a net gain everywhere.